Safely to 
So we can walk amongst chaos and confusion. Praise you, O God. Our man's conceit caused your unwavering compassion unites us through the sanctifying work. We praise you, O God. On this Pentecost Sunday, we give you praise and adoration for restoring order through your word and for restoring our souls through the death and in Jesus Christ. Let us pray. All glory, laud, and honor goes to you, Heavenly Father, for you are good and your mercy endures forever. From the moment you set tongues of fire to the apostles, you have worked within us, preparing our lips and filling our mouths with the proclamation of your message of Jesus' death and glorious resurrection. You compel us to share our faith with others so that the hope of salvation we know can be imparted to them. We praise you for your infinite majesty and endless love. And may all of the glory be given to you for all time. Amen. We now join Lord, we have sinned against you in thought and in deed. Have mercy on us, O Lord. We have grown boastful and arrogant. We act as if our ways rival your ways. We take credit for the good in our lives. Thank you for our hardships. Have mercy on us, O Lord. We have constantly wandered off your path of righteousness allowing chaos and confusion to rule our lives morally and ethically. Have mercy on us, O oh Lord. We deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. If we are heartily sorry for our sins and we sincerely repent of them, we pause to reflect on our own unrighteousness and we plead for mercy and forgiveness for all of our sins.
Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. My friends, God has heard your cries of repentance and has sent his son to die for your sins so that you may live with him eternally. It's because of that sacrifice that I, by virtue of my office, by the command of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, announce the grace of God to all of you and proclaim forgiveness for all your sins. May this wonderful gift of forgiveness be and abide with you always. Amen. You may be seated for our hymn of praise, Splendor and Honor. The Old Testament reading is from Genesis, the 11th chapter, verses 1 through 9. Now the whole world had one language and a common speech. As men moved eastward, they found a plain in Shinar and settled there. They said to each other, come, let's make bricks and bake them thoroughly. They used brick instead of stone and tar for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city with a tower that reaches to the heavens so that we may make it, make a name for ourselves and not be scattered over the face of the whole earth. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower that the men were building. The Lord said, if as one people speaking the same language they have begun to do this, then nothing they plan to do will be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language so they will not understand each other. So the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. That is why it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of the whole world. From there, the Lord scattered them over the face of the whole earth. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
The second reading is from Acts, the second chapter, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment, because each one heard them speaking in his own language. Utterly amazed, they asked, Are not all these men who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that each of us hears them in his own native language? Parthians, Medes, and Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them, and said so they've had too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These men are not drunk, as you suppose. It is only nine in the morning. No. This is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy, your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. This is the word of the Lord. Every time I feel the Spirit's moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit's moving in my heart, I will pray. Upon the mountain, my Lord spoke. Out of his mouth came fire and smoke. I looked around me, and it looked so fine. I asked the Lord if all was mine. Oh, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Come, Holy Spirit, flow down on me. I need your power to set me free. Teach me to follow me to pray, help me to walk that narrow way. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Yes, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will pray. 
Yes, every time I feel the Spirit, every time I feel the Spirit moving, yes, I will pray, I will pray. Thank you, Kirk and Mark and Lloyd, and as the Spirit moves you, please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel, which today is recorded in the 14th chapter of John, beginning at the 23rd verse where Jesus promises to his disciples the gift of the Spirit. Jesus replied, If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. He he who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you hear from me are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. All this I have spoken while still with you. But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. Peace I leave to you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. You heard me say, I am going away, and I am coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I am going to my Father, for the Father is greater than I. I have told you now, before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. I will not speak with you much longer, for the Prince of this world is coming, He has no hold on me, but the world must learn that I love the Father, and that I I do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us see. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated, and I will invite the young people of our congregation to please come forward and have a seat up here. Come on down. We got Molly and we have Braylon today. And maybe some guys. It's Pentecost Sunday. And were you listening to Mrs. Lynn when she read the second lesson? No? Okay. I kind of thought that. So here I'm going to read a couple of verses for you. Now listen carefully. When the day of Pentecost came, All the disciples were together in one place, and suddenly a sound like the blowing and violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house they were sitting, and they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each one of them. Did you hear that? What were the two signs? What did the people see that day? They heard the wind blowing, and they saw tongues of fire, right? But maybe you can't really see the wind, can you? But we know it's all the way around us because we feel. Kind of like you ever see one of these? You know what they're called? Pinwheels. Yeah, and when the wind blows them, and you can see the wind that way. So when you walk around, like Jesse is holding this up in the air and we're feeling the breeze coming off the air conditioning will move it, but we can't do that. So I I brought a couple of these along today. Why don't you guys come here? You pick one. like that. All right. Now, let's watch. Let's make the, let's watch the wind, okay? Follow me. That's fun, isn't it? Can't you? Does pastor have bad breath? <laughs> oh, God. 
just helps you to remind you you can't see the wind just like you can't see the Holy Spirit. But the wind's always around us, isn't it? And if it's not, all we have to do is move a little bit. I think these are a hit, aren't they? All right. When you take these home, you can stick them in your yard if you like and plant them and you'll be able to see when the wind blows outside. But in the meantime, when you see that wind blow, when you see these go around, I want you to remember that Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father is with us every day. Okay? Let's pray. Your hand. <laughs> Dear Jesus, help us to always remember that you are with us in your spirit and in your love and in your grace. Amen. Have a great Pentecost day, okay? All right. And as they go back to their seats, we'll continue with the singing of our hymn of the day. Speak, O oh Lord, your servant listens.
Happy birthday, church. I bring you greetings in the name of the triune God, Father, Son, and, and the Holy Spirit, our comforter, our counselor, our leader. How many have heard the first two readings that we heard today? In the Joanne read and the story of Pentecost. How many have heard those stories before? Everyone is raising their hands because you should have heard them in Sunday school. You should have heard them in church. You should have heard them many times before. But have you ever thought about how they fit together? There's a wonderful reading, the one from Genesis, the story, Genesis, the story of the Tower of Babel, tells us about how God confused the language of mankind. And the second one is just the opposite. The story God overcame the confusion of language in order to proclaim work of Jesus, his son. That first story, the one we know as the Tower of Babel, illustrates our innate inability to resist sin. Just think about it. God had tossed Adam and Eve out of that perfect garden of Eden because of sin. Sin yet prevailed. So God sent a great flood, flooded the world because of sin, and sin prevailed. And to think that, thought that humanity would have gotten the message. But we didn't. Mankind continues to find new and creative ways to sin. See, the problem with the people in the Tower of Babel account was not that they were building a tower. I mean, everybody can build a tower. We build towers nowadays. The problem was, the problem was their attitude. Because their goal, it says very clearly, was to make a name for themselves. When we pray the Lord's Prayer, remember that line? How it would be thy name. Well, instead, the people of the Tower of Babel were saying, hallowed be our name. It was self-centered rather than God-centered. And God had determined then that the evil creativity of mankind, well, it just knew no end, knew no boundaries, and so he decided to place a limit on the spread of evil in the world. And he did that by confusing our languages. And when he did, work on the Tower of Babel came to a stop. When he did, mankind spread out around the earth as he had commanded. In the second account, which is very familiar to us also from the second chapter of Acts, relates the events of that first Pentecost 2,000 years ago. Pentecost was a festival that God had established through Moses. Its original name was something that you probably heard, the Festival of Weeks. And that's why there were so many people in Jerusalem. They were coming to celebrate one of the three major festivals that God had ordained. A festival that he given to the people of Israel and instructed the people of Israel to celebrate through Moses way back in Leviticus. That's why so many pilgrims were in Jerusalem that day. The, guy, the day that God chose revealed himself in the form of the Holy Spirit. How did he do that? He made his presence known with a loud, rushing wind. And he also made tongues of 
fire come down rest on the disciples' heads. Would that have caught your attention? It certainly caught the attention of those who were in Jerusalem. It grew and drew quite a crowd that day. And when the people all gathered together to find out what was going on, to find out what the hubbub was all about, just as God had confused the languages of mankind with the power of Babel, so he overcame that confusion by giving his people, his disciples, the ability to talk in different languages, the languages of all the people who were gathered there that day. And that gift had a profound effect on everybody there. How is it that we hear each of us in our native language? And then they listed a few of the cultures that were present in Jerusalem. We're going on to say this. We hear them telling in our own tongues the mighty works of God. You see, God provided that ability for the disciples on that first Pentecost Sunday. God gave them the gift to speak in different languages. God gave them the ability to communicate with all people so that they could proclaim his mighty works, so that they could proclaim his deeds. At Babel, when God confused the language of mankind, he was restraining evil and seeing how evil mankind was. But when he granted the ability to speak in different languages, he was proclaiming his mighty work. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He proclaims the mighty works of God. So you might ask, well, what are those mighty works of God? Just after the reading today, go home and look it up. Just after Acts, the end of our reading, Peter said these words. He addresses the crowd and he said, Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works. In other words, he'd done all these miracles and all these signs that God did through him in your midst. As you yourselves know, this Jesus was delivered up according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God. And you crucified and killed him by the hands of flawless men. But God raised him up, loosing the pangs of death because it was not possible for him to be held by it. The mighty works of God are the works of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The works of Jesus, crucified and risen from the dead. The mighty works of God are the works of Jesus that earn forgiveness for you and I, both now and forever. The mighty works of Jesus are what heals the conflict and separation that we have with God the Father because of our sins. Because of his mighty works, we're no longer God's enemies. Instead, the Holy Spirit works faith in our hearts. The Holy Spirit adopts us into God's family as heirs, as brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. And Jesus' Father becomes our Father. God has promised us that he will always both here now, in this present time, and in eternity, when we're with him in heaven. That's the good news of the gospel. We 
are saved, we are forgiven, we are redeemed, we have the promise. On that first Pentecost, after Jesus had risen from the dead, the Holy Spirit created a miracle of divine communication. See, the disciples, they weren't just uttering heavenly gib gibberish. No, they were proclaiming the truths of God. They were proclaiming the truths of God in the native tongue, in the native language of all those who were there to hear. They told how Jesus had fulfilled all the prophecies of the Messiah. They spoke about Jesus' perfect life, about his imminent death, about his suffering, about his resurrection, about his ascension back into heaven to be with God the Father. They spoke of our sin, and they spoke of the forgiveness that Jesus earned for us. In that perfect communion that day, that perfect communication, they praised God by telling of his mighty work, by telling of his deeds, his deeds of saving us, his people, from ourselves, from our sin, from eternal damnation. Through the perfect communication of that day, the Holy Spirit changed the church. Before Pentecost, people were looking forward to the Messiah. They were looking forward to God's promise. They were looking forward to the Anointed One. We who live now, who live after the Pentecost, we have seen that in Jesus Christ. And we now look to Jesus. We now look to the Son of the Living God. We now look to the Savior of the world. Because on Pentecost Day, the Church of the Old Testament became the Church of the New Testament. All by the power of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit now doesn't put his appearance in anymore by the sound of rushing wind or by little tongues coming down on the head of preachers, although that would be kind of cool. Get your attention. Rather, it comes to us in the means of grace. It comes to us through his sacraments. When we receive Jesus' body and blood at that altar, we receive the Holy Spirit at that font. He comes to us through His Word, which we receive in many and various forms. Sometimes it's ink on paper. Sometimes it's words in song, as Mark and Chris sang for us today, as we've sung out of our hymn. Sometimes you hear God's word just like you are now through the pulpit. Sometimes we hear it because we've taken it to heart and memorized it. God's word lives deep within us. We hear that message proclaimed by the power of the Holy Spirit. We read it together study it together, and we hear it together. That is what identifies God's people. That is what identifies the church. God's word, living and growing among us. It's a message that in his love,
Today we confess the third article of the Apostles' Creed, the one which testifies to the person and work of the Holy Spirit. And we speak together the section of Martin Luther's small catechism that explains it. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. What does this mean? I believe that I could not, by my own research, say, believe in Jesus Christ my Lord, or come to Him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with His gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, He calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth, and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. In this Christian church, we daily and richly forgive all my sins and the sins of all believers. And on the last day, He will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is most certainly true. You may be seated. The offering plate is located at the rear, right back there by Spike, as usual. And on this first Sunday, if you brought a gift for the food pantry, a gift of food, you can please bring that up right now and place it here on the steps. Lord God, Heavenly Father, as we celebrate today the coming of the Holy Spirit, we pray for an increase of your word, asking that it might be heard in every language, bringing the good news of sins forgiven through Jesus to every place in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we pray for the world and for all nations on this planet, asking that there would be times of peace and security in our days, and that the word of God would have free course all everywhere. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we pray for those who are sick and shut in, and all who are in need of our intercession, especially our friend Jenny Hobby, Bill Koshua, Karen Krieger, Frankie Oliver, Gail Lindemeyer, Curtis Miles, and Jean Moore, that their bodies would be healed, and that when they would be supported by your people with care, in the name of Jesus, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we pray for the church and for this Christian congregation, that we might be filled with a sense of appreciation for the fruit of the Spirit as evidenced among us. We especially lift up to you those who are celebrating birthdays in the coming week. Joanne Lynn, Felix Moore, or Fior, and Karen Schumacher. May we daily grow in love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Father, we pray that we might be led by the Spirit to do the good work that God intends for us to do, bringing aid to the poor and hope to the oppressed, working for justice in our communities and being agents of peace in our circles of relationships. We especially ask your blessing on the hunger and health ministry that we have here at Redeemer. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. As we pray, Father, we remember with gratitude those sisters and brothers in Christ whose earthly journeys have been completed. May we be guided by the Spirit in ways that honor their earthly lives as we anticipate the eternal joys to be shared with them in the mansions of glory. 
Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand and turn to page 9 in your worship folders as we continue now. My friends, God desires to be with us, his people. And we are reminded of this desire and the love that shapes that desire whenever we feast in the sacrament of Holy Communion. It doesn't look like much compared to what we normally consider feasts, just a small piece of bread and a sip of wine. Yet this is a feast that can sustain and nourish like no other. For this bread and wine is the body and blood of Jesus given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Eat of this, and you will never go hungry. Drink of this, and you will never go thirsty. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds for this most sacred and holy meal by blessing these elements with the words of this tradition. <laughs> Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, All of you drink of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, poured out for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this every time you drink it. Remember it. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Good has seen. 
in my wretched state before the world's foundation and mindful of his mercies great he planned for my salvation he turned to me a father's heart he did not choose the easy part but gave his dearest treasure <coughs> Please stand. 
God the Son who became clay to die and rise for us. We thank you that you have given us part of the peace in this sacrament. Rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, so that we may recall our Lord's words and live according to them, serving you, building the church, and calling people to Jesus. To our same Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and fill you with his peace both today and tomorrow and into eternity. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
church together all who follow Jesus all around the world yes we're the church together the church is not a building the church is not a steeple the church is not a resting place the church is a people I am the church you are the church we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. We're many kinds of people with many kinds of faces, all colors and all ages too, from all time and places. I am the church. You are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together. 
At Pentecost, some people received the Holy Spirit and told the good news to the world to all who would hear it. I am the church, you are the church, we are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world, yes, we're the church together.